Hey, what's up guys, Matt with The Movement System. In this video, we're gonna talk about lateral knee pain, why it's occurring, and how to fix it. As a physical therapist, running coach, and a runner myself, this is something I know is really important, and this is actually something that I dealt with, so I'm basically making this video for myself as of two years ago. I had lateral knee pain that sidelined me for over a year, and it kept me out of races. I couldn't run more than a mile for over six months, and it was really frustrating not to know what was going on. In this video, I wanna explain the physiology now that I've learned a lot about it, experienced it myself, and figured out what works to fix it. So let's go ahead and dive into it. If you're having lateral knee pain with running, you probably came across the diagnosis of IT band syndrome. Let's talk about what that is and what it means. The IT band or iliotibial band runs along the side of the hip from the ilium up at the hip down to the knee and the tibia and the fibula. The IT band is made of connective tissue, so it's fascia and it helps store and release energy when we're running. Runners may feel a sharp stabbing pain in the side of the knee when running, specifically during the landing phase. Often this comes on slowly throughout the run and then it kind of hits you at one spot. For me, this was right around the 0.75 to one mile mark and I really couldn't push past that. I just kept getting that really sharp stabbing pain in the side of the knee. Oftentimes if you're searching this, you'll see exercises like clamshells and sideline leg raises as well as stretches or foam rolling prescribed to treat this. While this may help some runners who are really weak, it is really usually just a starting point and a lot of runners need more load and more specific exercises to address this and get to full running again. If you're feeling like some of these basic exercises that you may have found online aren't quite enough or aren't really working for you, this video is gonna take you to the next level, give you a little bit more advanced and specific exercises to really address getting a more stable position in the stance phase and getting you back to good capacity to be able to run. We're gonna address the problem of lateral knee pain in three different ways. Number one is going to be exercises that are specific to improving stance phase mechanics. Number two is going to be workload management. And then number three is gonna be tempo. All three of these are very important that you get right to make the best progress. We can't just add one or two exercises and expect this to resolve, especially if it's something that you've been going through for weeks or months. But if we can improve the exercises that you're doing to make them really specific to improving the stance phase and giving you a stronger running gait, we also improve your tempo and we also improve your workload management. Then before you know it, you'll be back on track to running again. I'm gonna walk you through exactly how I did all of these three things personally to go from not even being able to run one mile to six months later being able to finish a half iron Man. All right, let's go ahead and get started with the six exercises to improve your stance phase mechanics. Number one is going to be a weighted march. This is an exercise where you're gonna pick up heavy dumbbells or kettlebells in each hand, and you're gonna march forward with three seconds of stance time on each leg. This is a slow and controlled march, and it's going to build stability through the hips with each step. It's really important that you're executing this well. We wanna be thinking about being tall with the exercise, so we're touching our top of our head to the ceiling or towards the sky. We also wanna be thinking about holding that leg in the air at a 90 degree angle, nice and strong for three seconds before slowly moving forward and touching it to the ground. We wanna shift our weight into that foot and then drive the other leg up. We want to be really smooth with this and if we are, we can in that stance phase, really strengthen the way the hips are working there. This is what we call a closed chain exercise, meaning the foot is on the ground just like it is in running. So strength with this exercise carries over much more to improving your running mechanics than an open chain exercise like a clamshell. A good target for this exercise is 60 seconds of marching three times, working up to holding half of your body weight between your two hands. Build up to this over time. Exercise number two is our long lever bridge, and this is going to work both the hamstring muscles and the adductor muscles, again, to help improve our running mechanics. What we're gonna do with this exercise is start with two feet on the ground in a regular glute bridge position, but we're gonna step the feet farther out away from our hips to increase activation of our adductors and our hamstrings here. This is gonna make it more specific to the angle of our leg when we're pushing off and landing in running. We can start off with two legs here and we wanna make sure our form is really good here with our shoulders, hips, and knees in a straight line. We don't want the hips to be sagging down. We really wanna be able to progress this two single leg over time so that way you're working 10 seconds on the left leg, 10 seconds on the right leg, alternating back and forth. We want again 60 seconds here, three sets. 
Number three is a band external rotation exercise in standing. So this is our stance phase again. We're gonna be driving the knee out into the band and then bringing it back in. We wanna build control of bringing that knee out and then a little bit back into midline, bringing it out and then a little bit back into midline. When we do this, we need to keep the big toe on the ground. We can't have the ankle roll out as we go. So foot stays on the ground, knee pushes out without the ankle rolling. Once we're really solid with this and we can push the knee out, hold it there, feel the back of our hip working here, then we can work on introducing a lateral toe tap on the other side, where we're reaching the leg out to the side, reaching the leg back in towards the midline. This is a really great exercise that I got from my running coach, Chris Johnson, who I'll link in the description below. It's a really good exercise for, again, building those stance phase mechanics. For this one, we wanna build up to the point where we can hold it and then do 30 seconds of toe taps with the opposite leg, three times. Exercise number four is a side plank. This one's pretty basic, but it's gonna build the capacity of our entire lateral chain, our obliques, the side of our hip, and the IT band's capacity to be able to handle load. Again, really important for building stance phase mechanics and improving the symptoms that we're experiencing on the lateral knee. We wanna do this one starting out, if we need to, on the knees with them bent at 90 degrees, but quickly work up to doing a full side plank on the elbow and with the feet. This is another one that we can incorporate daily or at least every other day, three sets, 30 seconds each side. Those first four exercises are ones that you wanna do before each run, and then these last two are ones that you could just do once or twice a week. Exercise number five is a split squat. This is an exercise where we're gonna be really building the hip strength again. We wanna be taking a weight either at the chest level or two weights, dumbbells towards the side, and then we wanna be getting into a split squat position or a lunge position. From here, it's just a nice, slow and controlled descent and then slow and controlled ascent up. This is a great exercise to load really heavy and do something like four sets of eight repetitions each side. Again, for this exercise, we're looking at once or twice a week. If you want to, you can even push that to three or four times a week. And then exercise number six is our single leg calf raise. This is again one that we wanna be doing at least two times a week, very heavy. If we need to, we can start out with double leg calf raises, full range of motion. If you can do 15 full repetitions with double leg calf raises, then you need to be progressing into single leg to really be getting a lot of good load through the calf muscle and through the Achilles to really further make progress. This is another exercise that I like to load heavy for something like four sets of eight on each leg. I can't emphasize enough that these exercises are joint angle specific, they're load specific to how we're gonna be performing in the running gait, and they're gonna have the best carryover to improving our stance phase mechanics. Especially if you're already a strong runner and you're experiencing lateral knee pain, clamshells and other open chain exercises where we're just lifting the leg out to the side probably aren't gonna be enough to really carry over to improving stance phase. We're gonna need to work these exercises, load them heavy if we wanna improve of those mechanics. All right, moving on to point number two, and this is just as important as the exercises, that is our tempo of running. A lot of runners are overstriding, and that can cause irritation of the lateral knee. One thing that really helped me was just going on Spotify, searching 165 beats per minute metronome, and then just running to that beat for at least four or five runs. Is 165 right for you? It's hard to say. There's a lot of good research that increasing your tempo by five to 10% can improve symptoms like lateral knee pain. If you're tall like me, 160 to 165 beats per minute may be a really good tempo to adopt. If you're a little bit shorter, you might even wanna go to 170 or 175. This will depend on running speed as well, but it probably will just feel awkward and like you're almost shuffling at first. That's okay. I felt super awkward and like I was falling over and shuffling for the first at least three or four weeks of trying to run at this tempo, but over time you'll build that capacity and you'll build the mechanics to run at that tempo and you'll be surprised how much better your knee might feel with that. Especially if you're running at 130, 140, 150 beats per minute, I would really encourage you guys to try to increase that tempo by at least five or 10% and then gradually improve your mechanics at that new higher tempo. The other thing with higher tempo is that it also slightly widens your stance, which takes pressure off of the IT band. So as you increase your tempo by five to ten percent you'll see that your stance is a little bit wider and that tends to help as well all right our third and last point is workload management and this actually is the cause of up to 80 percent of running related injuries meaning that you're doing too much too fast being consistent with your running mileage is really important to avoid injury. If you've only been running three miles twice a week, for example, your capacity is about six miles per week right now. If you go and try to run 
10 miles all at once, you're way exceeding your current capacity. We wanna make sure that we're staying within about 10 or maybe even 20% of our current training workload. So if we're used to running six miles, we don't wanna run more than about seven or eight miles in one week. Once you have an injury and it brings you way down, this can be really challenging to build back up. For me, I was only running about half a mile two or three times a week. That's really low mileage and it takes a lot of time to build that up. Increasing your mileage slowly over time can be really tough whenever you're starting back from an injury. If you were only running half a mile a few times a week because of your injury, it's gonna take time to build that up. Even if just a few months ago you were running 10 or 20 miles a week. So just take it from where you're at right now and build up gradually because if you're like me and you were stubborn and you just keep trying to push through those long runs and it keeps hurting you, it's just gonna keep this cycle going and you're not gonna get better. So it's really important to build up gradually over time five to 10% progression per week. Overall, if you've been trying one or two exercises and it hasn't been helping, you may need to really dial in all three of these factors, increasing your tempo slightly, improving your workload management, and adding exercises that are really gonna translate to better stance phase mechanics. If you get all three of those things right, I think you'll be on the right path to reducing your lateral knee pain. It's gonna take some work, but if you put in the work, I think you'll get there. I really hope this was helpful. I really wish I came across this video when I was having that knee pain and was really frustrated a few years ago. If it was, go ahead and smash that like button subscribe so you don't miss any future videos leave me a comment below on how it works for you and if you have any tips for other people on what has worked for you feel free to leave those in the comments as well thanks so much for watching guys and we'll catch you the next one what's the dog pooping <laughs> on camera let's put that in the video there may or may not have been a dog pooping in the last clip but anyway